Hi everyone. In this video, I'm going to be walking through activity 8-5 titled Configuring and Testing a GPO. This is from the MCSA Guide to Installing and Configuring Microsoft Windows Server 2012 R2. In my edition of the book, this activity begins halfway down page 344. So the purpose of this video is to edit a group policy and show how it affects a computer um, when it's applied correctly. Um, in a previous activity, we created a blank policy for this that we're going to be modifying. I went ahead and deleted it because I want to show how to create that policy object. Um, it's really straightforward. You select the OU, the organizational unit where you want the policy to apply. Right click and select create a GPO in this domain and link it here. Give it a title. Following the textbook, I'll be naming mine GPO3. Um, when you go to look at it once it's been created, um, you may get this error. This is part of the security configuration that is set up by default on servers, for Server 2012 at least. It's this IE Enhanced Security Configuration. Um, you can simply turn this off or disable it. I would not recommend that in a real environment. You can also just add it to the um, Trusted Sites list. Um, really quick, if you have something in there that you want to remove or you're just testing, you can open Internet Explorer, go to the Options, select the Security tab, select Trusted Sites, and s click the Sites button here. And you can come here to remove things later. Or you could manually add if you wanted to here, as long as you know exactly what site you're looking for, or as you see the examples, um, you can use a wildcard as part of a site. Anyway, so we can verify that my MMC has been added in. And now I can come and view the settings for this newly created GPO, and we can see that it has no settings defined. It's, it's empty. So the purpose of this video is going to be configuring this group policy and seeing how it applies to a computer. In Active Directory, we want to make sure that the computer that we're looking at is in that OU. Um, I think this was originally in Computers. Right after it joins the domain, it'll be up here. You can just click and drag to move OUs. And it'll give you a little warning saying that moving an object from one organizational unit to another will change the way that group policies apply to it. And that's actually exactly what we want to do. We want it in this OU so that this group policy will apply to it. So now that we're actually getting into modifying the group policy. We want to right click on the policy that we just created and select Edit. Once it opens, we want to go into the computer configuration, which is open by default. Select, select Policies, Windows Settings, security settings you may need to adjust your window to see these we want local policies user rights assignment we want to find allow logon locally and we're going to go ahead and define these policy settings by adding the administrator group Now that we've done that, if we refresh our group policy management window, we'll now have settings showing us that the local logon is allowed for administrators. If we come over to our Windows 8 computer and get logged in, we're going to go ahead and log in as the domain admin. go to the desktop and we'll just run secpol msc 
just as it's shown there for security policy. This would be the local security policy console. We want to go and look at our local policies of user rights assignment. And we see that allow logon locally currently has other groups. The guest, administrators, users, and backup operators can all log in locally. And we can see that based on the icon here, this is configured on the machine itself. That's not the domain policy that's being applied yet. So we'll close that. We'll run a command prompt and give the command gp update. You may or may not need to do gp update slash force. Adding that switch forces it to go and double check every single policy that applies to it. Um, without force, it'll just go and look for any differences. So in theory, a GP update without the, the switch should work, but if it doesn't, you may need to add the switch force. Then when we do our secpol.msc, come back into local policies, user rights assignment, and we can see by the icon now that is picking up this policy from our domain controller. And it's removed the other groups so that only administrators have that right. I want to go ahead and test it by lo trying to log in as a non-admin user. And to do that, I want to make sure that the user that I'm testing is not an admin is not part of the administrative group, so he's simply a user. And there we go. So when a non-admin tries to log into this machine, they receive an error message stating that that sign-on method won't work. They're not an administrator, so they can't log into this computer. So I'll go ahead and log back in as the domain administrator. take a look at that policy again. <coughs> we see that it's being applied and even as an administrator I can't change this policy on the local machine. I can't modify it, I can't add anybody or remove anybody, um, so I can't make any changes on this machine itself. Any changes to a, a domain group policy like that need to be changed on the domain controller. So let's go back to our domain controller. And we're going to set that back to being not defined. We'll need to do another GP update to make sure the computer picks up that change in the policy again. Um, by default, the computer policies, um, they're refreshed or updated from the domain controller to the computer um, every 90 minutes. There, I believe there is a 30 minute offset to that so that every single computer isn't trying to check in and update their policies at the exact same time. It'll be 90 minutes, plus or minus 30. Um, this bypasses that and forces it to do it on command. Um, another way to 
force it to refresh or update its policies is to restart the computer. Um, as it starts up, it will go and check the policies to make sure it's applying the correct policies on boot up. So, we should be able to log in now as a test user. For the sake of keeping this video short, I'm going to pause that up for the user, and I'll be right back to continue the activity. All right, now that we are logged in, we're going to go to our desktop, and because we are not part of the administrators group, we won't be able to open our security policies. Um, this requires ad administrative privileges. Um, there is a workaround as long as you actually have administrative credentials. Right click on the start button and select command prompt admin. This will prompt for administrative credentials. and open an elevated command prompt. And from here, we can open that console as an administrator. So if we come back in and look at our local policies, user rights assignment, we see that allow log on locally. The icon has reverted back to show that it's uh, being locally controlled rather than controlled by the domain, and our other groups are back. So it's picking this up off of the local group policy rather than the domain group policy. Um, so if we needed, we could come in and make changes to the local policy. Um, it looks like that wraps everything up for the activity. As always, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, please feel free to leave them for me in a comment below, and I will try to reply in a timely fashion.